What better way to test a new microphone than to do a blind listening test? If I find Sennover the K669D, this is a dynamic microphone for only 36 US. Kind of crazy, but is it really good? Today, we're gonna be able to figure that out through a blind listening test. I've got five other microphones here, all budget priced. I'll even throw the SM7B in there just so we have that kind of piece. So seven microphones, blind listening test, and uh, we'll come back for the results at the very end. We'll do mic one through seven. We'll talk about them and I'll give you my final thoughts on this mic. Let's go ahead and unbox it and get into some sound tests. Interesting note, we actually have a new overhead mic. Those of you who might have watched my videos have heard that it's slightly different. This is the Samson CO2 microphone. And weirdly enough, I have the Rode Video Micro kind of wind muff on top of it just to kind of knock out some even more noise. So anyway, cool mic that's above. It's just out of frame. But let's go ahead and unbox this. So here is the Fifine K669D. And we're going to go ahead and open it up and see what's inside for this unboxing. They have a little bit of material right here because they can It'll just tell you basically what you're able to plug it in. It'll probably give you the actual tuning graph. Hopefully that's in here that they would include. Um, no, no, no graph or anything like that to be able to know what they've EQ'd it like. But here's the microphone from them. It's really nice. It's a metal body, plastic attachment right here. And as I said earlier, it is an XLR only connector. It is top address. So you do speak into it, into the top of the microphone. Kind of like the Elgato Wave mic. Uh, so interesting to see how it sounds. Let me know if you want me actually to pick up a Wave. I think it's a Wave DX mic to be able to see how it sounds. I just don't have one in my inventory. But hopefully this microphone is similar to the other mics that we're going to talk about today on this table. So let's go ahead and talk about the other mics we're comparing to and then we can go from there. So we're also going to be using the Rode Pod mic, the Fiducci SL40, the Fifine K688, the Fifine AM8, the Mayono PD 400X and for good measure we'll throw in the Shure SM7B which is on my setup over there. So we're going to run all of the microphones through the Fifine Amplitank, this SC1 recorder from them just so we can have a consistent bass and uh, yeah this is pretty interesting. I've already kind of messed with it and played with it. It's a great interface. Would highly recommend just from what I've already tested. And for those of you who are going to say YouTube compression you're not going to be able to really tell. So I'm going to put all of the WAV files into a Google Drive folder and put them on my website on a blog so that you can go and get the original wave files of all of these microphones and you can be able to tell without YouTube compression which microphone you like. All that's done. Let's get into some sound tests. Sun Tzu said, the art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. The art of war then is governed by five constant factors to be taken into account in one's deliberations when seeking to determine the conditions obtaining in the field. These are the moral law, heaven, earth, the commander, method, and discipline. Sun Tzu said, The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. The art of war then is governed by five constant factors to be taken into account in one's deliberations when seeking to determine the conditions obtaining in the field. These are the moral law, heaven, earth, the commander, method, and discipline. Sun Tzu said, the art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. The art of war then is governed by five constant factors to be taken into account in one's deliberations when seeking to determine the conditions obtaining in the field. These are the moral law, heaven, earth, the commander, method, and discipline. Sun Tzu said, the art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. The art of war then is governed by five constant factors to be taken into account in one's deliberations when seeking to determine the conditions obtaining in the field. These are the moral law, heaven, earth, the commander, method, and discipline. Sun Tzu said, the art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. The art of war then is governed by five constant factors to be taken into account in one's deliberations when seeking to determine the conditions obtaining in the field. These are the moral law, heaven, earth, the commander, 
method, and discipline. Sun Tzu said, The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. The art of war, then, is governed by five constant factors, to be taken into account in one's deliberations when seeking to determine the conditions obtaining in the field. These are the moral law, heaven, earth, the commander, method, and discipline. Sun Tzu said, The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. The art of war, then, is governed by five constant factors, to be taken into account in one's deliberations when seeking to determine the conditions obtaining in the field. These are the moral law, heaven, earth, the commander, method, and discipline. So I just finished recording them all. Right now I'm going to go ahead and listen to them and then come back and tell you which mic was what, give you a small little snippet of each one, and uh, let you be able to hear what it is and we'll come back for final thoughts after. Make sure you go in the comments. Go ahead and put your guesses down in the comments. Which one do you think the K669D was, or which one do you think the short SM7B was, or give me all seven if you're very ambitious and hopefully you got them all right. So let's, let's get into that. Oh man, so I just finished listening to them and it's actually really difficult to be able to go between all of them and figure out which one is the best when budget microphones are getting really good these days. And let me just preface this before we get into it. My opinions are subjective to my voice and my ears and what you feel is completely different. So if you disagree with me, please disagree in the comments, but tell us why and uh, you know, give us your thoughts so that everyone can make an informed decision when it comes to these microphones. Let's get into the order. Mic number one was actually the K669D. Mic number two was the Rode Pod Mic. Mic number three is the Fifine AM8. Mic number four is the Mayono PD400X. Mic number five is the Fiducci SL40. Mic number six is the Fifine K688. And mic number seven is the SM7B, but I've already put it back on my stand behind me. So let me give you my thoughts on all of these. Let's start with the microphone we're reviewing, which is the K669D. I'm honestly extremely impressed. For $36, when I did the recording, the microphone I heard after this was the Rode PodMic. And not only did it sound better than the Rode PodMic, it had a much lower noise noise floor and I think that that's probably the most consistent thing that I can say about this microphone and a couple of other mics on the table and what else I really noticed was it was EQ'd well not boomy in the bass not too much highs it just it felt natural for my voice I'm a tenor if I'm if you think about a singer um, I'm not too low of a voice or too high but this fit my voice really well uh, out of box I probably still would add a little bass onto the EQ for you to be able to hear it but, but compared to the Rode pod mic for hundred dollars I just did the Rode pod mic USB and I said that both mics are great. They are literally tanks. They are built to travel. But if I'm being honest, compared to like the K669D and a couple of other mics on the table that are cheaper with more functionality for a better price, the Rode Pod mic falls behind. And it's not that it's a bad mic because it can EQ well. And if you have one of these, don't feel like it's, you know, me pooping on it. I'm saying that if a $36 microphone that also is XLR only can achieve a better sound with a lower noise floor, in my opinion, I think this is the the go-to microphone. Now, this one I also has a little bit more handling noise than this. It has a, a kind of like a built-in shock absorber inside. So yes, and you get the road warranty, etc. But Fifine has been fantastic to work with. Let me just go ahead and tell you that. Um, not only is their customer service great, but their reps are awesome. So I don't think you're gonna have a problem if you have an issue with one of their mics. The Fifine AM8 we've covered several times on this channel. Um, and I think honestly, the 669D has the exact same sensor that is inside this, the AM8, but tuned slightly different. This feels more boomy, like it's meant to be more out of box for like a podcaster or a streamer, a game streamer, uh, that just wants to have that boomy feel without having to really mess with EQ. This feels like it, it's kind of marketed to it, plastic body. Remember, this one's an all metal body just with the plastic stand, which by the way, screws off, so you can put a different attachment on the bottom if you wanted, but that was this one. And then honestly, the one that surprised me this time that I, I, I've used it before was the PD400X. This mic in the 669D had a very, very similar sound. I'll play back-to-back -back samples right here for you. Sun Tzu said, The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Sun Tzu said, The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. 
But anyway, as very similar as they were, they're a much larger difference in price. This one also is USB and comes with an app that you can do EQ and gate and a whole bunch of stuff on. Kind of similar to the Wave software and the Wave mic, but not the Wave software. It's $120 compared to $36 but a really good sound between them. So very similar noise floor as well. The Fiducci SL40 has impressed me since I've gotten it. It kind of sucks, if I'm being honest, on USB, but XLR wise, it's nice, a lot of handling noise. But uh, I would say that this is just behind what I would say the 669D sounds like. And then you have the K688, which was a really awesome mic. And I have used it so many times. I've used it as of like last week until I put the SM7B back over there. But honestly, compared to the other mics on the table, I feel like this one fell pretty short, if I'm being honest, maybe above the the uh, Rode Pod, but really behind most of the other microphones on the table. And I used to herald this as like the best budget mic, and it is still a awesome mic, especially on USB. I do think this is probably one of the best on USB mics that you can get, especially for $70. But when the 669D from the exact same brand for $30, especially if you're using XLR, this plus this mixer, this SC1 mixer, is only gonna cost you about the same price. It's gonna be less than a Rode Pod mic, or even getting the white mixer, the Ampligain mixer from them. And then the SM7B, there's not much more to say about that. This this mixer doesn't power the SM7B. There's not enough gain on it, so I've had to boost it in post. Just know that. But the truth is, you know, when it comes to the SM7B, it's kind of like the standard that everyone thinks about because everyone's heard that sound. So I always throw it in there. And also, they just released the SM7DB, I believe today, as I'm recording this, extra hundred dollars, and it gets a built-in cloud lifter for plus 18 or plus 28. But the best part about it is for that microphone you can still plug it in passively and use it as a regular SM7B or get the boost by using Phantom Power or 48 volt. So really cool. All right, that was my opinion. Honestly, out of all of these mics on the table, I would say the best two are probably the PD400X or the K669C, right behind it with the Fiducci SL40, AM8, K688, Rode Pod mic, and I'm not even gonna rank the SM7B because it doesn't matter where I say it goes, everyone gets so mad. Is this a great buy? If you're a podcaster, if you're a game streamer, if you're someone who needs an XLR microphone and you need a dynamic mic, you honestly cannot go wrong with a $36 microphone. There is, this is great. It's sleek, it's no frills, it's light, it, it's it's really good microphone. I find fantastic job with this. Highly recommend this and I just reviewed the K669C, the condenser version. You can see they're very similar. This microphone, if you like condenser mics, this one's really impressive. You should go take a listen to that video. I'll put it up right here, and then I'll put another review with a bunch of other mics right here. Make sure you go get the raw audio files off my blog on my website and check out these videos. We'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.